Hello. So in this episode of Writing Notes, we're going to talk about thesis statements. Now, I've done a video on thesis statements before, but this video, I think, is going to be a little more specific and is going to be a little more helpful for people who are just starting to learn to write thesis statements. This is, also, this is going to be a video of two halves. In the first half, I'm going to talk about a lot of the same stuff my previous video covered. So especially, what is a thesis statement, and six criteria a good thesis statement should meet. Then in the second half of the video, I'm going to give you some formulae, formulas, formulae, whatever the proper plural of that word is, for how to start drafting good thesis statements. So, uh, the first thing that we're going to talk about then is, what is a thesis statement? Well, basically, a thesis statement is a usually one to two sentence main idea or main argument for a paper. Um, some people say very specifically it can only be one sentence. Some people are more flexible uh, and say it can be one to two sentences. And then as you get more experienced and more sort of... Uh, effective as a writer, there are even what are called diffuse thesis statements, where you don't necessarily have a specific sentence or sentences that give the main argument, but you have a sort of overarching impression created. For the moment, we're not going to be talking about those. We're going to be talking about your one to two sentences. Again, this encapsulates the main argument, or the main claim that a particular essay or paper is making. So, six characteristics for a good thesis statement. Number one, it should be contestable. This is the most important characteristic for a thesis statement. If your thesis is not debatable. If it's not something that someone could reasonably disagree with, you do not, by definition, have a thesis statement. A thesis must be something arguable. It must be something that you need to argue uh, either for or against. And you can take a look at my video on um, distinguishing between argument, argumentative and informative sources uh, for a little bit more about that. If it's a statement of fact, for instance, it's not a thesis. It must be a claim that you need to support. Which brings us to our second criteria for a good thesis statement. It must be supportable. There must be evidence that exists in the world that can support your thesis. If there is no evidence, if there's no good reason to believe the argument, then it's not an effective thesis. Number three, it has to be specific. How specific is really a, a variable question. Um, the thesis for a book length project is going to be much broader than the thesis for, say, a two to three page essay. So you want to be thinking about the scope of your particular document, your particular essay, paper, book, uh, video, whatever it is, you want to make sure that you are as specific as you can be for the amount of space that you have to make your argument. Number four, it should be substantive. So this means your thesis, your argument should matter in some way. There need to be stakes for it. Stakes for someone, at least. Um, if it doesn't matter whether your argument is right or wrong, then it's not an effective thesis. It simply doesn't matter. Um, and so, if it doesn't matter, it's not going to compel readers either to agree or disagree, or even to read the essay. Next, it has to be conclusive. So what this means is that the thesis should be the largest claim in the paper. It should be the largest claim in the essay. Every other claim that you make in each paragraph should support that thesis, should in some way connect back to that thesis and help establish the argument that you're making. And finally, the sixth 
criterion is your thesis should be elegant. It should be a pretty, pretty princess with a little pink crown and fairy wings. No, it, not necessarily that, but your thesis should be well written. And while that's not necessarily crucial in terms of making a, a, a compelling argument, the reason you want your thesis to be well written is because if it's well written, it's more likely to stick with readers. So again, rhetoric is about compelling people to listen to the arguments that you're making, to consider the arguments that you're making. And if your thesis is well written, that's one technique you can use to be more interesting, to engage their attention more effectively. So now we're going to switch gears and I'm going to, going to uh, go to talk. So we're going to switch gears and I'm going to go to talking about some of the strategies and formulas you can use to start writing your thesis statement. So there aren't any hard and fast rules about how a thesis should be set up. Um, but what I'm going to give you here is four basic approaches that uh, if you're struggling with how to set up a good thesis, these can be useful starting points. And these are just starting points. These aren't necessarily uh, the ultimate way that you want to go with the thesis, but they can get your, your thinking started if you're struggling. So the first form, maybe the most basic form for a thesis is what we call, or what I'm calling a claim with reasoning. And this is basically, I argue X because A. So, in this case, you're giving the argument that you're making, which I'm using, uh, which I'm symbolizing with X, and then you're presenting the reasons why. You're presenting the data or the background or the evidence or whatever it is in the form of A. So, for example, um, I, I've chosen for all my examples, the question of arts funding in education, uh, specifically <laughs> in terms of my old high school, Grey's Odyssey. So, if we were using this claim with reasoning structure, a thesis might be, I argue that Grey's Odyssey should increase their arts funding because arts education helps students academically across the board. So in this case, we've got the claim, I argue that Grey's Odyssey should increase their arts funding, or uh, more accurately, a claim would be Greece Odyssey should increase their arts funding because we can actually drop the we can actually drop the I argue that oh, sorry. Uh, we can actually drop the I argue that and this claim still works perfectly well um, so that's our argument Greece Odyssey should increase their arts funding and then we've got the reasoning because arts education helps students academically across the board. So this would be the rationale for the argument. Now one thing you do want to avoid with this is what we call the five paragraph essay thesis. So uh, I do have other another video on the five paragraph essay and why it's such a problem, but basically the five paragraph essay thesis would be I argue X because A, B, and C. And the problem is that when you have a, B, and C that are distinct and disconnected reasons, then the, the structure of the essay uh, becomes much more disjointed, which is a, a huge problem in itself. So the second form of a thesis, so the second formula is what we call the hypothesis, which is basically if A, then B. Um, and this is a really common hypothesis in the sciences, the hard sciences especially. Um, this type of, of thesis formulation lends itself to experimental design. So to take our arts funding example, we could phrase this as if Greece Odyssey increases arts funding then students, that should say students, not student, uh, then students will perform better academically across the board. We're establishing a condition and then predicting a result if that condition is met. 
Now, there are a lot of variations of this. Um, you can do negatives. So if A, then not B. If we do this, then this thing won't happen. Uh, if not A, then B. If we don't do this, then this will happen. Uh, if not A, then not B. You can add in more elements. If A and B, then C and D, for instance. So if we do this and this, then this and this will occur. Or you can add uncertainty. If A, then B, B or C. So if we do this, either this or this will occur. Again, this is a really useful formula if the argument that you're making is about predicting an outcome of, of certain actions. So next we've got they say, I say. And this is actually the title of a really popular uh, composition textbook. So this is a really central way of making an argument. And essentially this is about identifying a position held by someone else and then responding to it. So this is really useful for things like counter arguments or confronting misconceptions. So our example might be, critics claim that arts funding is a waste of money, but the data shows that schools with more arts funding see better academic performance across the board. Now this is a slightly less specific argument in terms of what Greece Odyssey should do, but we've got critics claim. So we have they say, but the data shows. So that's I say, I argue this in contrast to what the critics say. Now our last uh, thesis formula is the syllogism, which apparently I forgot to put in the animations for. Um, but the basic formula for a syllogism, and this is something that uh, the rhetorician, the ancient Greek rhetorician Aristotle came up with, is a major premise, which is a broad statement that's true in most cases. It's an observation about the world. Then a minor premise, something about this specific instance or this specific case, and then a conclusion. Therefore, so, uh, this is a, a way of reasoning logically from a broad premise about the world to a specific, to the to the, the results in a specific case. So, because increased arts funding usually leads to better academic outcomes across the board, this is our major premise, something that's generally true about the world. Increased arts funding at Greece Odyssey, something about this specific case, would increase academic outcomes at Odyssey, therefore. So this is our conclusion. So. We can also sort of reduce this down uh, a bit more elegantly. And was, as you remember, elegance is one of our criteria for a successful thesis statement. Increasing arts funding at Greece Odyssey would increase academic outcomes for the students. Now, in this case, we don't have the stated major premise. So we don't have this initial clause in the for example thesis. Um, what you would want to do in the course of this paper is to establish that major premise, but for the thesis we can have syllogistic reasoning without necessarily stating each phase of that syllogism. So this is one thing to keep in mind, um, and again, you want to remember when you're working with thesis statements that they that there are a ton of different ways to potentially formulate them. This is not, uh, these four formula, formulae that I've given you are not the only ways of doing.